In this video, I answer seven questions about how to use soft light in a studio environment. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now, today I'm back in the studio, and I'm joined by Jack, who's going to be doing some modelling for us. And we're going to have a look at lighting, specifically soft lighting, how to create it, and how you can use it. Well, let's start with actually what makes lighting not soft, maybe a bit of a myth and a rumour. And that is if you grab yourself one of these little sort of paper napkins and you, you kind of put it over the flash, does that make your light soft? No, it doesn't. It just makes it less powerful. To make your lighting soft, you need to think about the size of the light relative to the subject you're photographing. The bigger the light source, the softer the light. But before we have a look at that, let's have a look at hard light and see what that is compared to soft light. So let's just take a picture of Jack here. We'll just grab the, uh, the flash gun. We'll pop it right in front of Jack or just off to the side and I'll take a shot. Here we go. So this has no flash modifiers on at all. It is just a straight shot and the end result is really harsh lighting. Now, how do we know it's harsh lighting? Well, have a look at the shadows. Look really close, particularly underneath the chin. And you'll notice that the cutoff between shadow and highlight is very, very sudden, and that's a hard light. Well, yes and no, because multiple lights should, in theory, give you a bigger light source but we've got multiple hard lights. As a result, yes, you'll get a slightly softer look, but you'll also get multiple shadows. Let's have a look and see how that works out in the real world when we take a picture of Jack. Okay, so here we go, Jack, so if you can just look towards me. Brilliant, here we go, one, two, three, bang. And as you can see in the picture, there are multiple shadows on the background. The lighting on Jack actually doesn't look too bad, but if you're gonna have the shadow anywhere in the shot, think long and hard before you use multiple lights like this. So is there a solution for this? Well, yes, there is. All we've got to do is turn these three lights into one light, and we do it by adding one of these. Some sort of light modifier. In this case, just a shoot through umbrella. And all I'm going to do is just attach that onto my little light stand there. And now I've got three lights, but in, in reality, only one of them is actually going to hit Jack. It's going to be this large umbrella at the front, and that should make much softer lighting. Let's see how that looks. Okay, same thing as before. And as you can see, what a difference. Now the shadow is still there, but the three light sources have been blended and merged into one. So we have one very soft, diffused shadow and much, much softer light. Well, no, it isn't always. The right sort of lighting depends on the subject and the look you're going for. In fact, there's plenty of occasions when hard lighting is exactly the right sort of light when you want a moody and dramatic shot, and often in black and white, hard light goes really well. If you want to find out more about how to use hard light, check out the Adorama Learning Center, where there's lots of information and articles on how to get the best with hard lighting. However, when it comes to lighting portraits, normally what we want to do is we want to flatter our subjects, and that's where soft lighting really comes in. It's much more flattering than hard light most of the time. Well, yes it can, but not in the way that I'm using it here. If I've got the light pointing straight at Jack, that's all I'm going to get. The light from here, it's going to come straight out of the flash, and it's going to be really hard light. But without actually doing anything to the flash, other than changing its direction, I can make this soft. And all I'm gonna do is point it away from Jack and at this white wall. If you haven't got a white wall, then bounce it off the ceiling. Anything where you can bounce the flash just to give you a softer light. By bouncing the light, I'm gonna turn it from a small source of light into a big source of light. Remember, the bigger the light source relative to the subject, the softer the light's gonna be. All I need to do is remember, when I'm bouncing the light off the wall, I need to make this a lot more powerful. So we'll just turn the power up on the flash. Okay, we'll go once more, Jack. And what a difference that makes to the picture. Beautiful soft lighting and a great portrait. 
Well, I like the softbox and I like the umbrella, but which one is best? Well, there's only one way to find out and that's to test them. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna test both the softbox and the umbrella. Now they give a very different type of light, but they will both give soft light. So let's start with the umbrella. So with the umbrella set up, all I'm gonna do is a really simple shot and then I'll repeat it with the softbox and we'll see how it changes the pattern and shape of light. Okay, so Jack, are you ready? Here we go. We're just gonna take a little head and shoulder shot, just like that. Now, as you can see in this picture, it is very, very flat lighting, but it's lit not only Jack's face, but also the background. How's it done that? Well, because of the way an umbrella works, particularly one like this, which is known as a shoot through umbrella, it scatters the light everywhere. Yes, the light comes through the umbrella and lights Jack in the face, but some of it bounces off the background. Some of it bounces off the ceiling. It scatters the light around like a hand grenade of light. It's very, very soft as a result, but it's very uncontrollable. So let's switch to the softbox and see how that looks different. So with the softbox in roughly the same place, I'm gonna take the same shot and see how it changes the look. So here we go again, Jack. Once again, Jack's face is beautifully lit with lovely soft light. But look at the difference in the background. Look how the background has gone really, really dark. That's because the softbox produces very directional light that's still soft. But because it's directional, less of the light hits the background and therefore the background comes out darker. Well, generally speaking, the closer the light, the softer the light. You see, it's all about relative size and distance. Now, up close, this light is very nearly hitting Jack in the head. It's about as close as I can possibly get it. That's where I like to put my lights. But then this is a nice big light source. If it was a bigger softbox even than this, I could move it further back and still get the same softness of light. Let me demonstrate with this flash gun. This flash gun, compared to the softbox, is tiny. But if I move it closer towards you, the closer I get, the bigger it becomes relative to the subject. And by the time I get it to about there, it's about the same size. But that is, okay, it's out of focus, but that is just a few inches away from the camera. So in other words, if I wanted to get this flash to be as soft as the softbox, I'd have to get it very, very close to a very, very small subject. Yes, you can. You can mix all sorts of different lighting anytime you want. Now, I'm using a two light setup here, so my key light, my main light, is still soft because I still want the soft light on Jack. We still, we still want to flatter him. We still want to make a nice portrait. But to light the background, I've added a second light, and that's a hard light, a bare light with nothing on it at all. In fact, I've made it even harder by putting a snoot on, which is going to make the, the edges just a little bit tighter to give me a, a nice look on the background. Let's take a picture and see how that goes. Here we go. So as you can see, we've got soft lighting on Jack, and then we've got that lovely glow around the outside caused by the second light only lighting the background. And the two complement each other perfectly. Right, so let's put this into practice, and we're just gonna do a little shoot with Jack here. Just run through a few kind of ideas and poses just to get some nice shots but all with soft lighting. In fact, all with exactly the same lighting. We're gonna use our soft box up relatively high. Now also, I put it right up against the background. So rather than using two lights, I'm gonna keep this really simple. One light is gonna light both Jack and the background simultaneously. Okay, that's the idea. Let's take some pictures and see what we get. So let's have a look at what I did to the images inside of Photoshop. Well, actually, I really didn't do anything to them in Photoshop. I did all the work in RAW. And if you're a Lightroom user, it's exactly the same in Lightroom Develop Module. 
Now, what I'm going to do is very, very little. Because we spent time getting this right in camera and in the studio, there's really not much to change here in Photoshop. In fact, what I'm going to do is jump over to the tone curve and apply my effect there. Because what I wanted to do was give this a sort of a, a vintage feel. We're going to play with the tone slightly. And it's one of the reasons I love to shoot against this grey mottled background. You can add gels to the background flash if you're using a multiple flash setup. Or here in Photoshop, I can apply a bit of colour by adjusting the tone curve. Now, working on the linear tone curve and changing the red only, I'm going to bring that red channel in a little bit and we'll drag it down like so. And that gives a sort of a cyan colour to the image. Next, I'm going to drop down and change the green channel. And on the green channel, I'm just going to put a small sort of S curve in, just like that, just a little hint of a change. Finally, I'm going to jump over to the blue channel. And on the blue channel, I'm going to bring up the bottom left corner and bring down the top right corner, just like that. And that just adds a little bit of blue tone in towards the, the shadow parts of the picture. And that is basically it. Just to show you the difference, that's what I shot. And there's just my tweak in colour. It's a gentle tweak, it's not a huge tweak. Now, I'm going to jump back over to the basic panel here, and we'll make a few changes here if we need to. So let's come down to clarity, because I haven't done anything with clarity, and I'm feeling like I've got withdrawal symptoms. Now, normally, if you know my work, I love to bump, pump up the clarity really high. But in this case, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with the soft lighting. So I'm going to bring the clarity down, and we'll make it a nice, gentle glow with the clarity like that. Now, I will push the contrast a little bit higher because I do like my images to have some contrast in them, but it's not the same as clarity. Clarity, contrast, slightly different results. And also, if you look at the histogram, some of you might look at this and think, well, this is really underexposed. Well, it is a low-key image, but it isn't underexposed. If you look really carefully, the line does extend right to the end. If I turn on my clipping highlights, you can see there are just a little bit of clipping just going on in the nose area there. And I can just tweak my whites just until I, I just put a little bit of clipping in there. I don't mind it a tiny bit, but I don't want too much. So don't be fooled when you look at histograms. It's easy to misread them. And that's it. Click on Open Image, you'll leave RAW behind, and you'll open your image up into Photoshop. And that is my picture completed. So there we go. That's the shoot done. Jack's been an absolute star. And we've got some great shots with some beautiful soft lighting. Now, if you want to see more videos by me and the other great presenters here on Adorama TV, then you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.